Good morning. Welcome to Northern Point of Discipleship. Uh, we ready today for the Word of God. I hope you heard the word Wednesday about giving God glory. When God was talking about giving glory. We was talking about it in when he was telling him when the glory had left the, the church and it left the threshing floor and went to Mount Mount Olive. And then Jesus came to Matthew, the fifth chapter, and began to uh, go up to the mountain. And the disciples came. He was beginning to talk about them that mourn, them that thirst, the meek of the earth. He was beginning to talk about his glory on the earth. So that was cited to me. So let's get into the word today. I promise you today you have a word. Today is one of the prophecy that the United States needs to hear. You can hear something that I told you. Five things is going to happen that God told me. One happened real quick was within the three days at the Capitol. And then, now it's four more things that's going to happen in the earth that's going to be devastating. So today God gave me a word for America. So this is the day you really want to hear. I know it's Valentine's Day. I got on red. Hey, look. But hey, I don't care what day it is. Hey, things are still going on on the earth. It just is our season. And God is trying to bring a change to America. Because he chose America to be a country of immigrants where everybody come together. They didn't want to follow the rules under the queen. Folks to come together. And we find out we just cannot come together. And that's the payday for all that. And so I'm not the bad news bearer, but I am the prophet of God. So today I come as a prophet, a nation prophet, to speak to you, to teach you what God is saying to you this season. So we're going to be coming out of Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, and starting at the 14th verse to the 16th. He says, And I will, I will dash them one against another, even their fathers and sons together, says the Lord. I will, I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but destroy them. Hear ye, and give an ear. But, but not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he calls darkness and before your feet stumble upon the darkness. The mountain, while ye look for light, he that turns to it the shatter of death and will make it a gross dark. So look here, this is God saying here, Jeremiah will begin to say, God, Jeremiah will begin to speak to, to God peoples, to God was speaking to him, to the peoples, trying to tell them to change, change the wicked way. We're going to step in Jeremiah in 14, and it's going to bring a little bit more of what's going on, what's happening. But look, let's pray, and let's get into this word. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory for your word. God, we thank you for a great nation. God, we ask you have mercy upon this nation, God. God, give us a glimpse of hope. God, begin to give us a reason that what we will realize that we know that we, that, that, that wicked cannot stand in this season, but God, you stand us firm on a rock, the ones who have faith and believe in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, now the scripture says, it says in Corinthians, in, in the first Corinthians second, it goes on, the, the eighth said, if the Christian world would ever knew, he never crucified the Lord of glory. You say, never would have them. You know, they go on, I have seen, I enter the heart of man, the things that God got for perfect, love them. And he goes on saying that man, no wisdom of man. You know, and, and we know the spirit of God could God give to us. But he get on down and on down in that chapter, he said, because he's spiritually disconcerned. Well, this season, people are a lot of spiritually disconcerned. They know the things of man, but God if you're yet doing something on this earth, and God is not due. I know you want this stuff to be over and over, but we see man right in front of our face, blind and denying, and setting us up for faith. And this is what Jeremiah was beginning to, he was telling Jerusalem. He was telling them, change your ways, quit it, don't do this, because God is going to send, send the enemy to take you over. And so we, we almost in a similar like season. He said, oh no, here we go, bad news, bird. Well, 2000, at the end of 2007, I'll begin to go around and tell everybody in 2000, beginning of 2008, I said, we're going to see banks fail, we're going to see this, we're going to see that. And everybody like, oh, I'm going to bring him back. But the hooping and preaching, preachers singing good, they brought him back. But still didn't, it still didn't stop what's going to happen. So you know what? Hey, I just come today to share with you, not to knock the air out of your balloon, but to prepare you what God is saying to his nation and to his country. Because everything ain't always good. Come down the season that he go to, that we have to go to because of leadership of things they have done and that God purpose that, you know what, the God people will be all right 
if we just trust God. So Jeremiah was again to speak here and begin to speak, but we're going to look at verse 16. Give glory to the Lord. And that's going to be our topic today. We got to give glory to the Lord because he was saying how that when he was up on the mountain, he began to tell why his glory was at. He began to say, when, when in Ezekiel say he seen the glory leave the church and leave the threshing floor, he said, went to the mountain, he was saying, he was talking about it was going to be on people that's going to do. And when he said it's going to be on people that's going to do, he would, he, would, he would let them know that the glory come from earth. We are God's glory. And we have to give God glory. We have to stand. We have to stand. The fall of America will be greed. It will be money. It will be money because even when God came, the, the, the priests, they didn't want him coming up, messing up their money. They trust in their money. We're not supposed to trust in money. We're supposed to trust in the Lord. And what people that build themselves up agree, politicians that build themselves up agree. And study doing the truth, they rather do a lie because of their position and their money and their livelihood. But what if everything torn up around you and, and no money and, and country torn up? What good is your position going to be anyway? It's going to be no good. We have to always, when you build a house, you build a good foundation. You build something for you build on. You got to build something to stand on. But the Bible says, when you reject the chief cornerstone, who glory be to God. And builders now in this season, leaders in this season, is rejecting God. They building it without Him and thinking it can stand. But I can tell you, brother and sister, God telling me it's not going to stand. We're in a season that it's not going to stand. And I said it. When all the preacher might be giving you bluff and telling you everything else, now I'm not saying I'm right. I wish I was wrong. But you know what? It's not going to stand like that. It's not going to stand. And, and that takes boldness. Because if you building off people giving you money and, and people are supporting you, you can't you can't tell the truth. Yes, you can. You can if you not reject the chief cornerstone. You not reject God. You'll tell. Him. Or you walking spiritual. You not walking fleshly. Jeremiah had God had personally chose Jeremiah to tell the truth, to be a forecast, to be a, 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 a person, a reason with God people to get him a change. Ezekiel was a mouth of mercy. After they had messed up, then still give them an opportunity to change. And God began to, after Jeremiah, if you look at Esther, he started popping up other people once they went in captivity, started anointing them to help bring people out in a situation. Because Ot was against them. If it was Esther there, Ot would have been against them. They never could have picked up two, they never could have fought. Because that was the creed went out that they're going to go out against the Jews. And the Jews just was going to be slaughtered. But by Esther, Odessa being in a place where her uncle sat her and told her, this is your purpose. And she was in a place for the king. I know a lot of women love that, that one, one day, you know, taking the power, you know, going to be with the king. Well, you know what it was? It was a purpose to be in that position, not for sexual, not for just a great position and riches. But she went in that position for God had ordered her to save his people. A lot of people get in position. They don't get in position for money and for things. They put in position to save God people. And a lot of people won't be put in position for themselves. That's not what God do. When God choose somebody to learn and point them, they only put in there for a time of trouble. They will stand up and they'll be that wedge. They'll be that spot and say, no, this door cannot show up, shed on God people. No, this thing will not clap on God people. They are chosen for a reason. And that's why we must give God glory. You know you chose it for a reason, not for a comfortable living, not for this and not for that. Because down to the Bible, you'll see that was man downfall with money and things and position and the pat on the back from people. But here, in here, you have to see that God was beginning to talk to Jeremiah, begin to tell him. He, he began to tell him. He was saying this right here. He said, I'm gonna go to verse 13. He said, Then shall thou say unto them, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will fulfill. In all my habit of this land, even the kings that set up on David's throne, and the priests, and the prophets, and all inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. With drunkenness. Not know which way drunkenness. And drunkenness. Have them drunk. Bumbling. Drunk. Drunkenness. Because their heart went right with God. They didn't want to hear what God said. So he filled them with drunkenness. You look at news, you can't believe how people could lie in position. Drunkenness. 
took away your integrity and told you to go to school, get an education, do what's right. But you see what you've been said all along is not what you know, it's who you know. Because if you're wrong, dead wrong, it's who you know can get you out. That is a messed up system. That's a bad system. But when is that going to turn to our country? What's going to make you want to do right when all I got to know is no so-and-so? Because we got it going on. Sounds like it comes to be a game. So in other words, he said in 14, he said, I would dash them one to another together, even their father and their sons together, and said the Lord, and I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but destroy them. He said, hear ye, and give an ear, but not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. Give glory to the Lord. And we was talking about, up in Matthew, the fifth chapter, when God was telling them about, about, uh, uh, the thirsty shall be filled with the word of God. Come to meet you and have the earth. He began to tell them about blessed are them when they was going to. He was saying blessed in Matthew 5. Whatever they're going to, it, didn't, it wasn't feeling good. But he said, well, blessed is them as they were giving God praise going to. People don't want to go to. They don't want to trust God. They want to trust money and the things they got. Greed. Greed. They want to trust that. And they'll do everything in life to keep it. But they leave God out. But can I tell you, this is a built-in time. I'm going to tell you God's going to do something. We're going to see something on earth like you've never seen before in this generation. You're going to see God move. You're going to be aware that God don't like wickedness. I promise you this. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And he says, he said, give glory unto the Lord your God before he called darkness before your feet to stumble upon the, the, the darkness mountain. And while he looked for the light, he turned into the uh, shadow of death. My God, as we look for light, as we look for change, death is reigning everywhere on the earth. As we look, but maybe God's going to change, but we ain't changed. But see, we want God to change and do, but we see more death here, more things happening. And because we own a mountain where the glory is at, but we don't want to give God glory because we are the glory. And we just stand right where we at. Paul and Silas will put in prayer to shut these boys up. Don't let them out. If you let them out, I'm killing you. The jail, what they told him. Man, they praising God in their darkness in the midnight hour. What they doing? They just as happy as the fever. They just happy they want to be. They praising God, and guess what? Earthquake come, shakes the jail, breaks it down, and the jailer think that they got away. He's, oh, he's going to kill himself. Paul said, no, we're here. We're going to help you. We're here. We're going to help you. And that's the only people that Paul said he baptized. He, he said, no, we are here. We're going to help you because when God chooses you, when you're going to, no matter what you get get into, you begin to give praise. Write it down. He gave him praise. Esther, she gave him praise. It didn't matter what no weapon was formed. It may have been formed, but God had a way to bring you out. So you don't go looking for something. You stand right where you at because you know what? You're going to bring the glory to you right where you at if you're not giving them a praise and what you're going to do. I think about my mother and them and all the old saints went on. You know what they did? They just gave God praise in what they was going to do. We couldn't see it. We want to do better. We want to get better. But they gave God praise right there and thank it. And then things started showing up. Things started working out. When their lights got cut off, they just gave God praise. When the children was going to, they gave God praise. When it got bad news, they gave God praise. And the glory showed up right there. They didn't have to run somewhere. They had to go nowhere. It was right there. And just like we said in Romans 10, he said in verse 8, he said, we don't say we're going to get him, or who's going to bring him down. He said, neither to our mouth. Neither to our mouth. We speak it. We say it. We praise it. Matthew would say, you my glory. And Matthew, the fifth chapter, said, you my glory. Because Matthew said he was a lion. He was a king. The book of Matthew, it, 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 it draws Jesus as being the lion, the king. We have to understand that he, the king will begin to say, upon him, blessed. Blessed is him. When they go to him and give God praise, they're giving God glory. But you know what we want to do? Man don't want to go to Man thinking about his social living. Man is destroying us. Man is messing us up. They don't love God out of it. And they put in, they put in the mob. They put in gangsters. And you know what that's going to happen. There's a lot of us come from a place that we are addicted to that. You, you want to fight? We're going to fight. 
And we try to be preached, won't be saved. So a lot of us got that thing in us. We have put that stuff in the past. Paul said, I forget those things past. I look in front of me. But they want to bring back this thing. They want to they want to fight. They want to do all this crazy stuff. And there's a lot of us, all we know where we come from here to fight. We was told that we do what's right, we can get away from that. Now, how can we get in and try to do what's right and got to go back to what we already know? Just bringing back something that's like a breath to us. Stuff that we thought that we can get away from. But the enemy knows what he do. He knows how he start treating people. But I don't think people know they're really ready for that. They say they are, but maybe they're blind and can't see farther. Come on, let me get into this a little bit, and I'm getting ready to get out of here. Let's go to Jeremiah 14, chapter, so I can begin to tell you something, what God says. Jeremiah 14, chapter, and we're going to start at 13, verse. He again said, I lo, the Lord, behold, the prophet says unto them that ye shall not, that, that, that ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give you uh, assurance peace in this place. So Jeremiah was telling them, change, the famine is coming, problem is coming, but they prophet in that city struck line and said it wasn't. It was gonna be that you're gonna get on peace, that you're gonna bless them, Lord. Then when Jeremiah was going to bless them, now you telling me one thing, or you telling them something different? And then then 14. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophet prophesied the lies in my name. I am not, I have sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spoken unto them. They prophesied unto you a false vision and the vision. These things is not and deceitful in their heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning these prophets in my name, and I sent them not, yet they they say the sword and the famine shall not be in this land. By the sword of famine shall the, these prophets be consumed. He said the very thing that says not going to be, they're going to be consumed. That's my worry about people in position is lying. It's going to consume them and their children in a generation. We're going to see this here. People's got to be careful. What they stand for and how they do it. All they're doing is setting their stuff up. To cheer the children, what they said came out their mouth, what happened to them. It's just it's what side you're going to be on. When Moses came up the mount and Joshua was there, they was having parties and doing everything. They made a false god for the lead out. Moses was mad. He told the Ten Commandments. You know Moses had a temple. I'm telling you, some of us have got temples. We, Moses already killed a man once. Moses don't play with him like that. So get what he told Joshua. Draw a line in the sand. Who's on my side or my side? And the one on that side, he said, kill them. And yes, they did. They killed them. People got to know who they're fooling with. They got to know they're fooling with the very living God. They cannot play with God. They cannot play with his system. They cannot play with his word. They cannot play. We don't see them that I just can't even believe. Here we are walking on the mountain with God glory at calling looking for a glimpse of light, a chain. But yet, he said, they find the shadow of death. Why? Why, America? Because we is not telling the truth. We're more concerned about money, and we let everything go, and we set the enemy up for his next move. Oh, I'm going to praise God by myself. In verse 16, and the peoples to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none, no, none to buy them, neither, neither their wives or sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour out my wickedness upon them. Wait a minute. You telling me we got a season coming that because they done lied? And protect it wrong. We got to see no more wickedness got to come up on this earth. We got to see no more things got to come to America that we don't got to have. We got more things coming. So now I see why four more things are coming. I see why we're going through what we're going through. I see why we're in position where we're at. Because you know why? Somebody is lying in the name of the Lord. Somebody helped cast the word of God out. Jeremiah will begin to tell them, you, you're not worshiping God where you're supposed to be. You need to get it right. 
God told me when I went to Africa, come back and say, I'm opening the door of revival. He told me America needs to be revived. America needs to be saved. All the way from the pulpit, all the way to the White House. Need to be saved. A lot of lives going on. People just hide themselves because they didn't get fat. God didn't put them in position to get all that money and then hide themselves and have a voice. But when it comes to it's too late, you watch, you will hear a voice in. But they should be talking now. They got all sorts of kind of books out there. They got all sorts of kind of uh, everything telling you about God. But how can we miss him? like this right here. How can we miss him like this in this season? We won't. And he says, and I'm getting ready to go, verse 18, and if I go forth into the field, behold, these flame with the sword, and if I enter into the city, behold, them that are sick with famine, yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into the land that they know not. And he said this. If you go on. He says, Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Have thou sold lawfully, lawfully designed? Have thou submitted us to there is no healing for us? We look for peace, and there is no good. And we, and for the time of healing, and behold, it's trouble. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our wickedness and the iniquities of our fathers, for we have sinned against Thee. Let me tell you something. Oh my God, praise the Lord. We call it a season not as good. Not as good as you think of. You want it to be good. But you better look at your leaders and look at everybody else. But you know, that's why God said, my people. He says, you know what? If they reject the chief cornerstone, they, they rejecting him. They're going on making somebody else say God. And all they do is they're setting the door of wickedness. Where is the church? Where is the church? I'm not talking about feeding people. I'm not talking about the vaccination shot. But why is it saying, look at here. You better look and read the writings on the wall. God have told me something coming to America. It's time for us to change. What is that at? On, on, in, in the position. Because you know what? That's what priests does in this time. They hear God. And they say what God said. But the boss is going to say, everything is good. Vaccine and fix it. We'll be okay. Oh yeah, politician, you can get up there and lie. You can do whatever you want to do. But you just set us up for failure. That's all you did. Because once you take the word of God out, and you don't stand for the truth, you just allow the enemy to come in and do whatever he wants to do. But thank be to God that I don't trust in you to be my protector. And you people's don't get caught up in so much. You, you, everybody want riches and love God. You can have riches with God, but you don't leave God. He's number one. He tells us in Matthew 33, if they seek you the kingdom first, all my righteous be added unto thee. Let me tell you something. We have to know and pay attention what's going on around us. And I come today to the long the long. You watch and see it will come to pass. You make it nobody else say it. But in the end, they might be. I pray that it is. And I'm not saying I'm all that. But I'm telling you what God is saying. He said, what the blind in doing is going to come upon their children and their family. We're going to see more things happen. We're going to see more things that we have never seen before. Because you know what? The church has got to wake up. We have to say, hey, enough is enough. Y'all need to quit lying. We're not putting you up there to lie no more. We're not putting you up there to go with wrong. Because God says it. He did it with Jeremiah. With Jeremiah, he was warning him. He was warning him. A great country. He was warning his country. A great country. He was warning. He told, I'm going to check, I'm closing this. He told Ezekiel, he said, look, Ezekiel's wife died. And he said this. He said, you will not mourn for her. He said, because I'm not going to mourn for, for, for Jerusalem. See, God's not going to mourn for, for people that's not willing to stick with him. But we done went down a path of grief. Even though it's a season of talent. It's a season of talent. God passed out talent. For us to prosper and make a way for us. But we're in a season that is unbelievable. Of the wickedness is at the head. And what they're doing. This is un it's unbelievable. You look for light. You find another darkness. You look for healing, you find another death. You can count your money all you want to. But if you ain't got your will right, <laughs> my God, you don't know what you're finna leave here. Tonight, tomorrow, the next day. Let me tell you something. America, it's time for you to wake up. It's revival time. 
this revival time, or else you better pray for it and get yourself ready, to, baby, to go do what you're going to do that God protect you in the time of going to you're able to be, make it and to stand. Make sure you keep the blood on your doorpost that you receive Jesus Christ. Because America, let me tell you something, that's going to move it away to America. And God can to bring us to our knees for this all change. We're going to recognize that it is God. God did not do it yet. It's just still the beginning. Yeah? Happy Valentine's Day. I'm a bad news bearer, but I'm a prophet of God nation. So let me tell you something. Hate me or like me. But one thing about blood will not be on my hands. I come to do what God tells me to do. And that's why I have nobody that I have the answer to but God. I have nobody, no big time tales I got to please and nobody I got to please. I can just shit, drop the mic and walk out of here and go about my little business. Because I got one thing God has positioned me like that. To only be connected to him and answer to him. I'm satisfied with my little stuff. If I'm a little tent or work hard, I know how to work hard. So you know what? I ain't looking for nobody for nothing. But my Lord is saved. So guess what? I come today to let you know, America, that God ain't finished yet. Because you know why? The chief, the builders have left the chief cornerstone out and put money there. A bag of money. <laughs> it's just a chief cornerstone. Glory be to God. God bless you. Hey, look, my name is Pastor, oh, my name is Pastor Glendale Winston. Hey, look, send me the letters do anything you want to. You know, I said to someone once, I said, how can you, how can you, um, vote for somebody that tell you that um, oh, they don't believe in abortion. But they believe in blowing up the whole country. They lie. They believe in abortion. They believe in killing the country. They believe in everything about them. It's time for America to wake up. and it, It's time for America to wake up and pay attention to the word of God. It's time for America to come together and to pray and say, God, you don't want to put us here. You don't want those keep us here. You're always going to protect us. And we need you right now because we are very fragile right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, look, God bless you. Look here. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you won't give your life to him. That's what Romans 10 and 9 says. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that your son of God is raised from the dead, you know, say you're saved. And if you would receive that right now in the name of Jesus, you should say it because you know what? He's in every one of us. He's neither to us. We are God glory. We are God praise. And what we got to do is give God praise. He'll make everything all right. He'll, he'll move the old spirit. you turn around and you wake up and you say, wow. It's just a whole different world that you've ever known. The whole different joy that you've ever known. The whole different peace that you've ever known. You know, I was somewhere and I was, you know, God had me prophesied. I, 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 I was prophesied about cancer was going to come to this town. You know, that trim. And I've been telling this guy that he was married to one of my people. And I kept telling him, change. You know, so I'm going to come here. Yeah, well, it came. I couldn't do nothing for him. Well, it came. It was too late. Well, that is real. And I began to tell this town. I said, look. I said, hey, look. Y'all need to change. I said, cancer coming. You know, do, do. And then the preacher got behind me. Said, oh, you need to whoop them bad tail kids and, and do this right. And got up and sung and hooped. And they loved and They called them back. What if, well, <clears throat> it's funny that nobody remember what that preacher song and what he hooped and did. But what happened, cancer came through and did that. They remember that little thing that God had me to say that wasn't favor to call me back. And I didn't want to come back because I was just doing God's job. But that one little thing. But Jeremiah was telling them, came back and got them. It is more important because God would not let his people slip upon them out and let them know. So today, I want you to remember this one more thing. It's time for us to get back where we need to be. And we need to honor give God glory. In everything we go do, we need to give him glory. And God said, you'll be blessed. Look here, we're going to pray. Nation, we're going to pray. And you know what? Ain't nothing we can do about it. Because you know what? I can say it all day. People are not going to hear it. They hear this and just blow it off. But that was the to Jeremiah. But God would begin to prepare Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah to go and buy some land. He started getting Jeremiah set up. And when he comes in and mess with Jeremiah, he set Jeremiah up. So you know what? Let's pray that we can hear and that we can change. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, I just thank you for everything you're doing. 
God, I, I thank you for how you're doing it, how bold of you speaking it. God, I thank you for giving me the wisdom and understanding the boldness to be able to say it, but it ain't faith. God, I thank you. I got no strongholds on me, nothing behind me, tied me. Well, I can't say what you want me to say, but I'm obligated to other people to say, God, I'm only obligated to you. You put me here, you'd be one to take me out of here. You put me in this body, and you'd be one to take my spirit out of this body. Lord God, your spirit. God, I love you today, and I praise you. I give you glory. Now, God, let ones who have ears, let them hear. Let them begin to pray so when they hear a sermon, they can hear it. Let the eyes and ears come open so they can hear it, God. That they'll know, God, that we are in a time, a terrible time. And that, God, that, that we have to recognize is you. And you are doing something bigger than we ever thought that ever could be. But, God, we love you. We trust you. Because you are a protector. You are a comforter. You are a lion. You are an eagle. You are the son of God. You are a merry baby. You got up on the cross for us and died. We know, God, you will not forget your people. And you will cover us to anything go on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, look, brother and sister, God bless you. Look, hey, look, you like me or you hate me. But you know what? Let this see. We'll see if it comes to pass or not. I'm not hoping it to come to pass. I don't want it to come to pass. But you know what I have to do? This is a job God give me. My job to give me no, no son to come up here to fluff you and to play with you. God told me to come up and make sure I put you on point. So you know what? Until we meet again, hey, where's the night? Let's get ready for where's the night? Hey, God bless you. Until we meet again.